I've got a quick tip for making a decision when you're not sure what to choose. Hi, I'm Angel, by the way. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, sometimes decisions seem simple, and sometimes those are the hardest ones to make. And uh, I don't know about you, but I end up spinning my wheels, wasting a lot of time and energy sometimes on... Um, Sometimes important decisions, too, or sometimes just kind of arbitrary decisions. And one that comes to mind earlier was I got invited to sing, uh, stand in for another musician and lead, uh, host an open mic thing that I've done before once and uh, with some people that I've played with a couple of times now. And it was a last minute thing and I had other, it was a last minute request and I had other things already planned. And so, like, both both options were positive, and so it wasn't like, you know, any kind of big stress to decide, and it wasn't really that big a deal either way, and yet I couldn't really, had a hard time deciding, and I had just heard this tip earlier online, and so I used it, and it was very helpful, which is uh, a tip, I think it's from a Buddhist monk or something, but uh, I was listening to Women of Impact, uh, Side Shoot of Impact Theory with Lisa Bilyeu, one of my favorites lately, and she was speaking to a woman whose name I have uh, shamefully forgotten at the moment. In any case, she was talking about an experience she had with a guru who told her, boy, that was a long way to get to this, wasn't it? Uh, a tool for making up your mind when you're not sure is to imagine yourself eating your decision and then imagine it getting digested through you and see how it sits in your belly, in your body, see how the energy of it feels. So for me to go play music, um, feels better even like to go play music and to postpone my writing, which is, has been postponed a lot and doesn't feel that great to postpone, um, nonetheless is something I'm doing on my own time and isn't, wasn't going to quite be done any more done tonight than it was done last night. Uh, maybe more done tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> I, uh, I have to be in a certain state of flow for that and it doesn't involve other people, whereas playing music with other people, and this was, uh, wasn't was like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but it is a unique opportunity and one that keeps uh, promoting my own growth and helping me uh, get better at performing and doing things on the fly, being flexible and adaptable in an entertaining and uplifting and upbeat way, which... Uh, so when I sat with both of those decisions, even though I wanted to do both of them, when I s sat with, as in imagine that I ate and digested each of those, I, I always like to say, like, imagine that I sleep on it, or sometimes even sleep on it, and wake up in the morning and see how it feels. So that's a similar technique to pretend like you ate it, but this worked a little faster, uh, or similarly, s similar time to imagining that you slept on it instead of actually sleeping on it. In any case, it was useful and I decided to go play music and now I'm going to edit, although I may go snowboarding tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of online mentors that I look up to. They don't know they're my mentors, but uh, people, business people who I look up to, among others. And they often criticize people for skiing, and I'm sure they would criticize me for snowboarding and playing music. And the thing that I would say to that, and to you, my dear YouTube audience, if you're thinking to yourself similarly like, how do you find time to play music and go snowboarding so much, is that a lot of people work and slave to be able to have time to go do the things they love, like write a book and go snowboarding and play music in a band. And even though I still am, haven't mastered quite the cash flow paying of my bills thing uh, long term, I've mastered it for short periods of time and then had it got out, away from me. And yes, I see the correlation between wanting to have a good time and that. I've had a lot of friends die young. Uh, and now that I'm getting older, I just turned 48, you know, some of my friends are dying old and still too young to still dying before they get 
the things done that they want to do. So I think it's important to do the things you love, love the things you do, and um, use tools like I just mentioned, sleeping on it or pretending like you ate it and digested it to make decisions when it comes to all the wonderful things that we get to choose from in life. Uh, love to know if you have two cents to add to my two cents on that. I gotta say, I'm feeling really good about my life in general. It's been it's been a little bumpy and wobbly in some areas, but overall, turning coming into 48 and having some original music and just really feeling like I'm being authentically myself for better and for worse. And um, I guess in some ways, the fact that hardly anyone agrees with me is some sort of testament to my authenticity in a weird way which I will examine some more. I'm not, I do have a tendency to just be a rebel and an outlaw, and, and I'm not trying to just be resistant and rebellious and abrasive by any means. I'm really just being true to my own nature, which happens to be uh, iconoclastic and rebellious and a little outlaw-ish by nature. What's your nature? Love to know if you care to share in the comments below. As always, there are lots of ways you can connect to me and support me. And many of those ways are linked to in the description below. Until next time, I wish you peace, prosperity, lightheartedness, laughter, peaceful conflict resolution, playfulness. Don't forget to drive forward. <laughs>